Getting right into today's video, we're gonna be starting off by prepping my client's nails for her new design. If you guys are not familiar with this process, it's essentially a backfill, which you are going to be filing down the acrylic until you have very little to no product left on the nail. Of course, you can always soak it off. I just prefer to do this method because sometimes soak offs can take forever. So I'm gonna be starting off with my e-file at 12,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using this beautiful bit from Not Polish. It is the football shaped one. I'm not quite sure what it's called, but I will leave it linked down below along with all the other products that I use in today's video. I'm gonna be going ahead and filing that acrylic off. We're gonna be using about medium pressure on the handpiece. Again, 12,000 RPMs on the e-file, and I am going to be moving across the nail consistently. I am not gonna be staying in one spot for very long. This is going to prevent heat spikes. It hurts a lot. I promise you, you do not want to inflict any pain on your client or on yourself. So the key to not causing any heat spikes when filing is just to continue to move across the nail. So if you are not aware, when you are filing, it causes friction. So that's what causes the nasty, painful heat spike. But if I file a little bit on one side and then move down towards the tip, move back up towards the cuticle area, go to the center of the nail, then by the time I go back to the first spot that I filed it's going to be nice and cool so it gives it enough time to just cool down and prevent that heat spike which is extremely painful so I'm just going to continue to do that I'm only going to be showing you guys the process on a few nails because it does get a little bit repetitive and honestly speaking once you see it on one nail you kind of get the gist of it on the other nails Now my client requested a shape change, which I completely forgot about until I was almost gonna start laying the acrylic. So we are going in with my hand file and filing those nails into the shape that she wants. So she did request an almond shape a little bit more on the rounded side. So we're gonna be doing exactly that. I love almond nails, especially on shorter nails. I think it just looks super, super cute, nice, dainty, and elegant. So I was extremely excited to be doing this on her nails. She hasn't had almond nails in a very, very long time. I think I did it once when I first started doing her nails, which was like five, six years ago. So we are going to be just filing the sides and then I'm going to go in with my hand file pretty much underneath the tip of the nail which is going to help get that nice and rounded shape. Again, I'm just going to be going in on the sides, filing the sides to kind of taper them in nicely and then filing lightly underneath the nail to create that very round shape. And then we're just gonna continue to do this. I do prefer filing it at this point versus when the acrylic is on because the acrylic is very thick and it will cause a little bit more of a hard time to create that almond shape. Um, so I just prefer once the nail is nice and thin, I go in and reshape it. 
And of course, during this process, I'm taking my e-file just to file the sides a little bit more. Um, I'm able to see where there's a little bit more of a thick layer of acrylic. Therefore, that's why I'm taking my e-file and just lightly filing once again. I could always go back in with my hand file also, but I just figured it would be a little bit easier with my e-file. So I'm filing the sides, the tip, and then if I need to debulk that acrylic a little bit more, I go in with my e-file very lightly because I do not want to mess up that shape at this point. Now we're gonna be going in with my sanding band and mandrel bit from Profiles Backstage. My e-file now goes down to 4,000 RPMs and we're gonna be buffing that shine off of the natural nail while also trying to file off a little bit more of that existing acrylic. And at this point, if she had any lifting left behind, I would try to remove that fully as well. So again, removing that lifting here as you can see. And she does have a little bit of lifting. That is very normal because she is a hairstylist. I feel like no matter what product I use on her, I have had a little bit of lifting. Um, but we did recently switch over to the Kiara Sky Primer and we did notice a lot less lifting this time. So I'm definitely glad that I made that switch. We're gonna be going in again, just filing that shine off of the natural nail pushing back those cuticles all in one motion and trying to get rid of the majority of that dead skin, of course. I'm going in with my diamond bit. It is super, super good. I love this bit. I've recently started using this per my last few videos. I've mentioned it before. We're gonna be going in and just removing that excess dead skin that we may have missed with the mandrel bit. It's really, really hard to get into those little snug areas of the cuticle area, so this one makes it super easy. And you can tell that I'm just easily buffing off that excess dead skin. Now we're going in with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, just cleaning the surface of the nail. I'm going very, very carefully, trying not to get any of that product on her skin as it is already irritated. If you guys did not already know, she is a hairstylist, like I've mentioned a lot in my videos before and earlier in this video. She has an allergic reaction to one of the products that she uses, so she does have a lot of peeling and just very painful areas around her cuticles, fingertips, and just all around her hands. So sometimes she has it under control, but she does have a little bit of a flare up here in today's video. So I'm trying to avoid those areas to irritate it any further. So now I'm going in with the acrylic primer from Kiara Sky. It's a thicker consistency, which is really, really weird to me, but it works and I'm not mad at it. So I'm going in and adding a thin layer of that on the entire nail because she does have a lot of little areas around the entire nail that is exposed of her natural nail. So typically I would just put it on the area that has natural nail exposed, but because like I said, it's kind of all over the place, we're just gonna add a thin layer to the entire surface. And 
And whenever we're going to be doing a design that consists of a lighter color on the natural nail, I always try to swatch a bunch of different colors. Now, by this time and the collection of acrylic powders that I have accumulated, I pretty much have an idea of which ones I could use and which ones I can't use. So, for example, because she does still have some bright colors on her natural nail left, I want to fully be able to cover that with a pretty cover color that will still match the set that she has. For this instance, I went for grabbing the Glam and Glitz nudes along with the Kiara Sky nudes. Their consistency is pretty good and the coverage is always really, really opaque, which I absolutely adore. And the formula is still very blendable, so I really like using those powders to cover darker or brighter colors that some other cover powders that are a little bit more sheer wouldn't cover. So here I'm just taking this beautiful color. I like that it matched really, really well with her natural skin tone along with the set that we're going to be doing so definitely glad that i was able to find an option for her nails today otherwise i probably just would have gone in with whatever color and then gone in with a gel polish so we're going to be adding that beautiful nude color to all of her nails this is going to be her base and then we're going to be doing tons of topical nail art so i'm just going in with my basic acrylic application for today's video i am using the not polish acrylic brush in a size 12 along with that i'm using the kiara sky Mon which has been my go-to recently and then of course this Kiara Sky acrylic we're just gonna be lathering it on there so I start at the tip and work my way up towards the cuticle area and then if I see any little areas that are kind of misshaped we're gonna go in and add a little bit more onto that area to make sure that everything is evenly laid out Of course, because she has that little irritated area, I want to make sure that I am avoiding her skin for sure. We should already be doing that, and I've talked about it before on my channel, how allergic reactions are very much so possible. So you want to make sure you are not touching the skin as much as possible to avoid any reaction from occurring. And especially if your client comes in with a little nick or any scratch or any cut near the cuticle area, try to avoid that for further irritating that skin. Now, I did want to go ahead and thank all my OG viewers for supporting my channel up until now. I am extremely thankful for you guys. And if you guys are new to my channel, make sure you guys check out my playlist. I have tons of informational videos from sit down and talk videos, Q&A videos. And also my beginner basics playlist is a huge hit on my channel. I go really, really in depth for acrylic application, shaping, e-filing, and liquid to powder ratio. So if you guys are struggling with your acrylic application or anything that has to do with nails make sure you guys check out that playlist as it goes deep 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 into the nitty-gritty of exactly how to perfect your acrylic application We're gonna be going in and filing the nails here I'm just taking that same bit that I used earlier today and I'm gonna be filing the surface of the nail focusing on that cuticle area and then the surface of the nail as well I'm doing very minimal filing because I do try to apply my acrylic very smooth so honestly speaking I don't have to do too much filing at this point 
I am just going to be going in very lightly with very light pressure. My e-file is at 10,000 RPMs as well. I'm going back in with my hand file. We're going to be filing the sides and again the tip. Even though I try to make my acrylic nice and neat, I always make sure I go in and file again because it does add a little bit of thickness to the sides and the tip. So I want to make sure that I'm getting that perfect shape that I originally did. So for the most part on my channel, I typically do tutorials. So I stick to talking about the tutorial and how to achieve the nail look. But for today's video, I wanted to take a quick moment and just thank you guys for supporting me in all my nail endeavors that I have came across and I have set my mind to do. Without you guys, it honestly would not be possible to be in the position that I am today. So I wanna really, really thank you guys for that. Not only that, but you guys know that I try to motivate y'all and I try to tell you guys that if you really set your mind to achieve any goal in your nail career you can achieve it if you put in the time the mindset and the effort practice 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 has always been my go-to when I tell you guys any type of advice I feel like it is really important but on the harder end of being in a career that is very very harsh I feel like we're not looked upon as like a professional industry i want to create a very positive environment on my channel in the comment section of all of my videos so if you guys are struggling with just support from the people that you have around you let's build a community on my channel where we can all support each other i always try motivating y'all whenever you guys are commenting on my videos as well how much better would it be if we have nail tech friends so if you can take the time and comment down below something, the area you're in or your interest or anything like that, and then scroll through the rest of the comments and just engage with one another, I feel like we could all build a really strong community where we just support each other, we follow each other, we share each other's work and just love and support. I try to comment so much on other people's work because I truly think that that is like the number one thing that helps you you continue to be motivated so let's take a moment comment down below um, just whatever you guys think whatever y'all have on your mind I'm gonna try to be engaging with everyone as well I already tried to respond to as many comments as I can so I will definitely be focusing on that as well but now back to the video we're gonna be doing that same type of vibe that I mentioned before some swirls some French we're gonna be doing neutral tones we're gonna be doing pretty much nudes and browns so these beautiful liner colors that I'm using in today's video are from profiles backstage they have this fall collection that I got last year and I absolutely still love those colors it has nudes creams and browns and even pumpkin colors so that's pretty much what I'm gonna be using for today's video and of course my nail art brush is from a cart linked in my amazon storefront if you guys are interested it is my go-to my all-time favorite nail art brush it's the only one that i use on most of my videos so we're going to be doing pretty much french nails on every single one as our base and then we're going to be adding cute little details on top of that so we're going to be doing creams brown and nude and i will leave those colors the exact ones that i use down below in the description box but if i remember correctly i'm using the cream color white uh, brown which is coffee color and then pumpkin and i kind of mixed them to create the lighter versions or darker versions of each of the colors so I, it's really really hard to remember exactly what color combos i used because i kind of just lay them down on my little palette and i mix from there but once you guys see the colors you guys will be able to see a little bit more of the tones in the color and see exactly what i mixed together now here I'm just using a gel brush from a cart from one of my poly gel kits and I've been using that for cleanup and I really really like it. So if you make a mistake or you need to like straighten up anything or just you know how I'm fixing up that smile line, I take a little bit of Young Nails swipe on my brush, wipe it on my paper towel so it has very very little to no product on it and then I go in and wipe in the direction that I want it to go and I'm able to get that perfect crisp line that I wanted. Thank you. 
And of course, always remember to cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary. I am placing it in the light for a full 60 seconds while I'm working on the opposite hand. Um, that's kind of a good little indicator. Just throw the hand in the light and then work on the other one and take it out once you are done and kind of just alternate, make your time work efficiently. So we're gonna be doing lighter tones now in between those original little swirls that I did. And then we're gonna be adding smiley faces on the pinky, one in the color pumpkin from that fall collection of the liners. And I'm just gonna be doing like a half circle and then another one in brown just right on the other side and then i'm gonna leave that alone and wait until it's cured to add the tiny little eyes and smiley face then on the middle finger we're gonna be adding some flowers and i tried to make my life a little bit easier and use a dotting tool but it actually made it a little bit harder so i prefer to do everything like hand drawn and i was like you know what if i use a dotting tool it's going to be a little bit easier it's going to give me like an indicator of where i need to put the petals but then i didn't place them correctly so they were a little bit wonky and i would have loved to make the flower petals a little bit skinnier but i didn't realize they were nice and like full until it was already too late so i kind of just left them they still looked cute but for my liking i would have definitely just hand painted them but if you are struggling this is a really good alternative as well so i did the little dots and i started off with five and then I'm just taking my liner brush with the same color and connecting them all together in the center. And then we're gonna be adding some little lens flares if that's what it's called. But I'm starting off with a little cross type of design. And then we're just gonna be connecting it with a curved line and infilling the rest of that little area all connected. Um, just kind of like an easy way of actually drawing these without struggling. I've always tried to do them also like just the curved lines and then infilling the center and that's always really complicated as well. So we're gonna be doing that pumpkin color. I mixed it a little bit with a darker color and then we're gonna be using the lighter brown and also doing another one on that side. And of course, we're gonna be repeating that same design on the other hand. So I'm just showing you guys this process on this one. We're adding a tiny brown dot to the center of the flowers as well to tie everything nicely together. But again, always remember to cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary. So we're going in with that lighter tan color for these smiley faces. And then we're gonna be top coating the nails. Once everything is cured, I always try to place it in the light for one more round of 60 seconds, just to ensure that all those layers are fully cured. And per usual, we're going in with the Stain Resistant Top Coat from Young Nails for my lovely client's nails because she does get stains from hair color. So we're going in with a thin layer, but I'm making sure that I am lathering it on there where the nail art is at so that she doesn't get any chipping. And then we're going to be placing that in the light for a full 60 seconds. And of course, we're gonna be wiping off that tacky layer once everything is nice and cured with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. And to finish off this beautiful set of nails, we are going to be adding the cuticle oil from Profiles Backstage. It is actually my very own collab with them. I'm so excited to be announcing this and I cannot wait for you guys to purchase and try it out. It smells so good. So if it's not already on their website, I will update you guys, but it should be by the time you guys are watching this. I hope you guys check it out. It smells freaking amazing. Let me know what you guys think if you guys do purchase it. And as always, don't forget to use my discount code to save a little bit of money. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a ton and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.